Hey, welcome to part one of three of an intro to JRebel. In this short session, we're going to talk about the problem that exists in Java today, which JRebel solves. Firstly, we're going to talk about how JRebel came about, and also look at some of the aspects uh, which, which JRebel can offer to a developer, and which parts of a development environment are slow and unproductive, and how JRebel eliminates that. So firstly, how did JRebel come about? Well, back in 2006, Yevgeny Kabanov and Thomas Romer, after many years of application redeploy and container restart pain, decided enough was enough. It's time to fix one of the biggest problems in the core of Java, the redeploy bottleneck. So they created JRebel to plug this hole, and since then we've seen happy developers enjoying coding in Java with increased productivity. Let's take a look at what Java developers do on an hourly basis with this diagram. We'll start off on the top left here. In a very productive segment of our IDE, uh, a developer will typically write a bunch of code, but before they can actually test their code, they go into these two parts here, the build and compile and the deploy or redeploy sections, which can often mean restarting their container as well. Once all that's been done, which can take minutes, they then finally test their code changes. And if they find a bug, they have to go all the way through this entire cycle. And this cycle can take many, many minutes and even up to 20 to 30 minutes and an hour in some environments. We want to stay on this left hand side where we make changes to our code and then test our code. This is the productive segments. We don't want to be in the deploy compile or, or build and redeploy segment. What JRebel does is it entirely eliminates everything on the right hand side. So we can spin through this left hand segments of developing code and testing your code, entirely eliminating our wasted time. Integration is key for JRebel. Because so many different development environments exist, we put a lot of energy into making sure we have great integrations with IDEs. This includes debug support, config management and remoting support, particularly with the main three, Eclipse, IntelliJ and NetBeans. We also support other variants based off these, such as RAD and STS and so on. With build tool integration, you can have your JRebel config automatically created for you using tools like Maven, Gradle and Ant. Container support is very good with all the major and even some smaller containers catered for at many different versions. We have support for over 45 to 50 frameworks as well, which allows you to make changes to say your spring descriptors uh, or any other XML kind of uh, artifacts. You likely have heard of Hotswap in the past, a class reloading facility which has existed in the JVM for some time. However, as a Hotswap user, perhaps in a uh, debug session, you'll also understand its limitations. If you wanted to make a change within a method body, Hotswap can do this within your IDE debug session, for example. However, there are many aspects which aren't catered for, such as adding or removing methods, constructors, fields, the list goes on. Using JRebel, you can do all of these. You can add or remove methods, constructors, fields, classes, annotations, um, the list goes on. We'll also support uh, Java EE support for your artifacts, as well as support remoting facilities, which allows you to use JRebel where your development environment is on a local machine and your remote server with your runtime uh, is located on another server. Sounds like black magic? It kind of is. So now let's look at ROI or specifically what this means to you in save time. Here we're going to look at around 500 developers with an hourly cost of around 40 US dollars per developer. Typically, the average turnaround time is around 3.1 minutes, and on average, a developer will do this four times an hour. Based on these stats, and assuming a developer works around five hours of coding every single day, we're looking at 59 minutes wasted every single day. This results in almost 3,000 weeks of development time per year across 500 developers. The amount of reduced waste in dollars is shocking and as a result JRebel pays for itself in just a matter of days. This of course doesn't take into account the time it takes for a developer to regain their concentration on focus of the task they were doing before they were interrupted which can only add to the cost we see here.
So enough talk, this can clearly save us a huge amount of time. Let's now move on to part two of this introduction to get Gerable installed on our development environments so we can stop wasting this time.